The first battle of Panipat, fought on April 20, 1526, holds immense importance in Indian history for several reasons. The first battle of Panipat has been extensively documented by historians and chroniclers of the time, providing valuable insights into the military, political, and social conditions of the era. These accounts continue to be studied by historians and scholars. The battle marked the establishment of the Mughal Empire in India. Babur's victory over Ibrahim Lodi and his conquest of Delhi laid the foundation for the Mughal dynasty's rule in the Indian subcontinent. The Mughals would go on to rule India for several centuries, leaving a profound and lasting impact on its history, culture, and architecture. The battle marked the end of the Delhi Sultanate, which had been a prominent and influential political entity in India for centuries. Babur's use of firearms, cannons, and artillery in the battle introduced a new era of warfare in India. This marked the beginning of a technological revolution in Indian military tactics. As these new weapons played a crucial role in his victory, the use of firearms would become a defining characteristic of Mughal warfare and would influence future battles and military strategies in the subcontinent. Zahir Uddin Babar, commonly known as Babur, was born on February 14, 1483, in the city of Andijan, which is located in present-day Uzbekistan. He was a descendant of Timur, Tamerlane, on his father's side, and Genghis Khan, on his mother's side. Babur hailed from the Chagatai Turkic Mongol lineage and belonged to the Timurid dynasty, a prominent Central Asian dynasty. Babur's early life was marked by a series of challenges and struggles. He ascended to the throne of the Fergana Valley in present-day Uzbekistan at a young age but faced constant threats and was eventually driven into exile by rival factions and external enemies. In 1504, at the age of 21, Babur managed to capture the city of Kabul, which would become his base of operations for future conquests. Kabul provided him with a strategic foothold in the Indian subcontinent. Babur had a long-standing desire to expand his territory into the Indian subcontinent. He saw the rich and fertile plains of India as an attractive target for conquest. Babur sought alliances and recruited soldiers from diverse backgrounds to bolster his forces. His army consisted of Turkic Mongol soldiers who were loyal to him, as well as Indian allies and mercenaries. Babur was a skilled military strategist. He employed innovative tactics, including the use of firearms and artillery, which gave him a technological advantage over many of his opponents. He also adapted to local conditions and terrain, which was crucial in his campaign in India. Ibrahim Lodi was the last ruler of the Lodi dynasty, which ruled the Delhi Sultanate in the late 15th and early 16th centuries. The Lodi dynasty was of Afghan origin. It is believed to have originated from the Lodi tribe, which was prominent among the Pashtun ethnic group in the region of Delhi. Bahlul Khan Lodi, an Afghan noble, laid the foundation of the Lodi dynasty when he ascended to the throne in 1451, after overthrowing the ruling Sayyid dynasty. He established the Lodi dynasty's rule in the Delhi Sultanate. Ibrahim Lodi faced several challenges during his brief reign, including one of the following challenges. Many of his nobles were dissatisfied with his rule, leading to internal strife and conspiracies against him. Several provincial governors in his empire became semi-autonomous and resisted central authority, further weakening his control. The rise of Babur, who had ambitions of expanding his empire into India, posed a significant external threat to Ibrahim Lodi. Ibrahim Lodi is remembered as the last ruler of the Delhi Sultanate, and his reign marked a transition from the Delhi Sultanate to the Mughal Empire which would go on to dominate the Indian subcontinent for several centuries. Strengths and Resources Ibrahim Lodi's Forces Infantry Ibrahim Lodi had a substantial infantry force that included Afghan and local troops. Estimates suggest he had around 100,000 infantrymen. Cavalry 
he had a formidable cavalry, which was considered one of the strengths of his army. His cavalry numbered around 30,000 to 40,000. Artillery. Ibrahim Lodi possessed artillery, though the exact number is unclear. Babur's forces, infantry. Babur's infantry consisted mainly of his Turkic Mongol soldiers, as well as some Indian allies. He had approximately 12,000 to 15,000 infantrymen. Cavalry. Babur's cavalry, consisting of skilled horsemen and war elephants, numbered around 12,000 to 15,000. His army was well equipped with firearms and artillery, which played a crucial role in the battle. Tactics and Outcome Babur's Tactics Babur adopted innovative tactics for the First Battle of Panipat. He arranged his forces in a crescent formation, known as a Tulugma, to protect his flanks from the superior cavalry of Ibrahim Lodi. Babur also used his artillery effectively, causing chaos in Ibrahim's army. Ibrahim Lodi's tactics. Ibrahim Lodi's tactics were more traditional. He relied on the strength of his cavalry and infantry to charge the enemy. However, his army faced challenges due to Babur's artillery and disciplined infantry. Outcome. The battle was a decisive victory for Babur. Despite being outnumbered, his superior tactics, firearms, and discipline proved instrumental in defeating Ibrahim Lodi's forces. Ibrahim Lodi was killed in the battle, marking the end of the Lodi dynasty's rule. Babur established the Mughal Empire in India, with Delhi as its capital. Following the victory at Panipat, Babur and his successors expanded their territories, eventually unifying much of the Indian subcontinent under Mughal rule. This period of unification brought relative stability and economic prosperity to the region. See you again in another video from the pages of history. We always need your support in the form of subscription and promotion. If you liked our video, please subscribe to our channel and press the bell button for more videos.